It was really? crazy. First time ever? Well, uh, not really. I was going to say, that's, that's impressive. Fair. Somebody else had done it, though. It, it wasn't my fault, is what I'm saying. Well, of course so, not. <laughs> it's never my fault, is, is what I'm saying. Well, it's like uh, that scene from Lord of the Rings, right? Gandalf isn't late. And, it's, and he's trying to explain to, to Frodo, a wizard is never late, but arrives precisely when he means to, right? That's I think right. the same thing goes for priests. Priests are never late. We just so, arrive precisely when we mean to. And the good thing is that, like, they can't start without us either. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> and you always right. got a seat, right? You, you don't have to worry about <laughs> You thought you yeah. were here for the 8 o'clock mass? <laughs> you were really here for the 8.06 mass. Right. <laughs> we start very precisely at 8.06, not 05, and definitely not 10. Like Tomorrow that. may be 8.07. <laughs> We're but today to it's very precise you. at eight oh six point three. So welcome to all of our viewers. Again, my name is Father Jim Rolf. I'm and, Father Paul Erickson. And uh, so I'm the chaplain at Powers Catholic High School, and Father Paul is. I'm the chaplain of Lansing Catholic High School. So best diocesan school in the diocese, and it's here second best. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, before we went live, we were commenting that Father Paul seems to have as much hair as possible around his head <laughs> just in just in just to do as, as much as i can with what i got going on here and i have as little hair as possible <laughs> just everywhere it's i don't know like these opposites but it's good but you're yeah, still a good friend of, <laughs> of my father too <laughs> and so father paul and i do go way back i uh, entered seminary the same year same year and uh father paul had had some college education beforehand yep. and then had transferred into the seminary so he was ordained one year before me but so, really it was because of holiness that's right that's uh, right yes they they saw oh this one is the, is the chosen <laughs> yes come up higher friend to the higher place so yeah kind of like skipping a grade in in grade school exactly right? yeah exactly it's good times but what we want to do is always start with a prayer and so uh we'll do that and uh actually father paul do you mind starting us with a prayer today? let's pray in the, name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for all of your gifts and your graces. And Father, we, we ask that um, as we gather together, uh, both here and, and online, uh, Father, that your Spirit would be active in the hearts and minds and lives of all of us. Father, you, you promised us that where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in in their midst and father we take you up on that promise today we ask that um, you continue to pour out that spirit of of blessing that spirit of goodness trust um, in who you are and who you say that we are and father we ask this blessing and all blessings under heaven in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen amen thanks father paul and so uh what we want to do today is we're, we'll kind of like morph this, but we want to start the the last question we got yesterday was uh, Father Jim, what do you do as the chaplain at Powers? And so more or less, what Nothing. does the chaplain do? <laughs> the, the chaplain of Lansing yeah. Catholic does a lot. What does Father Jim do as the as the chaplain of Powers? That's a little iffy, but. Well, actually, one of my favorite things to do is just stand in the hallway and mess with kids as they go by. Absolutely. And so. Uh, one of my favorite things is, uh, at, I do, I notice when girls have gotten a haircut, when they've dyed their hair, done something different, and I'll say, oh my gosh, I love your hair today. And they always say, like, oh, thanks so much. And then they'll keep walking, and I'll very indignantly say, is there anything you want to say to me? And <laughs> they've just gotten very used to it. So a lot of kids, as they walk into school, are like, nice hair, Father Jim. <laughs> It just makes me feel so loved and so appreciated. So it's, it's always a good time. If, if you're training them to give you compliments, I'm not sure that that counts. No, 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 no. Father Paul, let me have this one. And so, uh, but as chaplains, we actually are kind of involved in everything that goes on in the school. And uh, it's been interesting. We There's four Catholic high schools, four diocesan Catholic high schools in the Diocese of Lansing. And we meet about once a month. Mm -hmm. and just kind of share what's going on in our schools, what's going on in our lives, what are some things that are working, what are some things that aren't. And in talking to everybody, we all kind of take a different approach 
And so uh, I know that for me, it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with students, a lot of prayer ministry, a lot of discipleship, a lot of like crisis management. Because I don't know if this happens at Lansing Catholic, but every day somebody's life is like <laughs> the worst day ever. And yeah. I'm like, come, come in, let's talk. And so I have lots of Kleenex that <laughs> yep. we go through yep. pretty Kleenex, regularly. Yep. And, uh, but then being involved with administration meetings, being involved with teacher meetings, being involved with kind of like planning and um, yeah, just and about everything. That's a lot of what I've been doing at least the last couple of years is um, kind of trying to look at big picture kind of things and making sure that the faith is infused into every aspect of the school and so yep, yep. I'm, I'm part of the and what's neat about being a chaplain is that you're kind of this whole other thing for the school right because I don't really work for the principal or the president I'm not a teacher I'm not a counselor and so <laughs> Whoever is in that school can kind of come to the chaplain um, with whatever problem they have, right? Because I can go to the counseling department meetings, but I'm not really a counselor. I go to the theology department meetings, but I'm not a theology teacher. I go to the admin meetings, but I'm not really an administrator. Um, and so it kind of gives this whole other avenue, this whole other branch of, of kind of outlet for students, for staff, for families, um, and even for the administration, right? Um, to kind of bounce ideas off of and being uh, that kind of sounding board uh, for just about anybody. Um, and so uh, that's been a huge blessing, actually, to, uh, to kind of get to be invited into just about any circle yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's part of the school. So I guess you could say our motto as chaplains is, instead of you are the salt of the world, you are the salt of the school, and we just get spread over everything. Exactly. Right? It's perfect. Exactly. And so as we go throughout the course of this interview today, feel free, post your questions. We've got like this real high-tech way of like getting us those questions. <laughs> it like gets inserted directly into our brain. So sooner or later, we'll all get those security chips. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be perfect. So Doors <laughs> open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot, I winked the wrong eye. <laughs> My car just unlocked. <laughs> it's going to be a fun hour, I can tell already. And so uh, what we want to do is talk a little bit about being a chaplain, but also talk about both Father Paul and I have had lots of experiences with all sorts of different healing ministries. And so whether that's inner healing prayer, whether that's physical healing, whether that's like in the confessional or in the anointing of the sick, being able to participate in God's mission to make us whole. And so we wanted to kind of share about that. And so we were actually talking before this because we planned about 15 minutes ahead of time. Because <laughs> we're so responsible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot, what are we doing? <laughs> it's, it's good times, though. And so uh, this was actually the gospel for today's Mass. And both of us had Mass already. Mm -hmm. And it turns out we both preached on what we're going to be talking to you about. And so we felt like the Holy Spirit was leading us in this direction. And so this is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your stretcher and go home. He rose and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were struck with awe and glorified God who had given such authority to men. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So, Father Paul, what did you think of today's gospel? So, uh, I love this gospel passage. Um, and I, I love it for a lot of reasons, but the I think more than um, just about any of the other healings that we hear about in Scripture, because we there are... <laughs> Just a ton, right? Uh, Jesus' entire ministry um, is just constantly marked by all of these healings and these mm -hmm. signs and wonders and miracles. But what I love about this one in particular, perhaps um, more than any of those others that you could point to, is that it actually uh, kind of speaks to why 
the Lord is focused on healing so much, mm-hmm. right? And it gets to um, really the, the crux of the matter because if you look at this particular passage in the gospel, the first healing is not the paralysis, yep. right? Yep. They bring the, per, the, the paralytic in on the stretcher, right? Looking for healing. And Jesus, what I, and what I love about this one especially is that Jesus sees their faith. Right, And so Jesus sees the heart of not only the paralytic, but all these people who have brought the paralytic to him. And God is always moved by faith. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's that's just who he is. Right. And so when he's um, when he's given these hearts um, to work with that are full of faith, he goes to the healing that he always wants to bring. Right. Which is the healing of yeah. the heart. Right, and so when he when he first encounters the paralytic, the first thing he says is, "Courage, child, your sins are forgiven." Right, he he meets him right there in that place of faith, that place of the heart, and that's actually the healing that the paralytic needs. Yep. Right, and I think we can often be so exteriorly focused, and we're like, "Oh my gosh, my life is difficult." There's these just like burdens that I carry in terms of like a physical uh, problem where really it is like the Lord sees into our hearts. And so often it's not even this compartmentalization where I have my physical problems and my spiritual or inner problems. A lot of times these things are like interconnected and and this is what Jesus is seeing. Absolutely. And uh, as, as he, as he meets this guy's faith, right? the, The, again, the gospel is so fascinating because the, the paralysis is dealt with as well, yep. but the paralysis is not dealt with for the paralytic, mm-hmm. right? The paralysis—he's he's talking to the scribes, right, who are thinking these other thoughts in their heart, right, which Jesus also sees, right? Jesus sees into the heart, yep. right, yep. and he knows these hearts need healing too, mm-hmm. and for these hearts, this guy is going to receive healing for the healing of these scri- scribes. And hopefully, anyway, that's exactly right. and that this is a big hallmark of Jesus's ministry, right? Is that he goes about healing in order to really proclaim that his kingdom has come, that he is the Messiah that brings us wholeness and that desires to uh, really make us new in him. And a, a big part of that is the physical healing. But ultimately, and even with Lazarus, right, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus had to die again. Right, and this guy's not walking around with his stretcher anymore, right? Exactly, um, yeah. And so even though his paralysis was healed, it was that, that interior healing and the, um, the, the idea that uh, there's, there's no amount of physical healing that I can receive that will bring, make me immortal, right? Yep. Immortality can come, but it comes here, right? And I actually have to pass through death in order to get... Th- to the life everlasting that I am actually made for, that I long for. And all of that physical healing actually just points to that deeper reality that that spiritual healing is exactly what Christ um, wants to do, right? That's where he wants to go. That's what he wants, what he wants to be for us. Um, And even the, the physical healing is a sign of that, of that deeper work that he, that he longs for. And it's been great. Both Father Paul and I have gotten very involved with Uh, kind of like inner healing prayer, inner healing ministry, uh, and could probably just tell stories for the next couple of hours, but (laughs) we'll try not to just do that. But it's been amazing to see the way that the Lord really does work in that way. And I think in us personally, but then also in our ministries as high school chaplains, I know that both of us spend a pretty good amount of time doing that type of prayer with students. Yeah, well, I actually picked this up from you, um, that when (laughs) Father Jim does do some things, I'll I'll go back on my original statement. Um, uh, Father Jim has a good idea once in a while. (laughs) Or even a blind squirrel, squirrel finds a nut, right? right? So That's this right. was my one. So uh, as we um, kind of got more and more used to uh, inner healing prayer and things, actually all four uh, diocesan chaplains went on this um, two-part retreat uh, through the John Paul II Healing Center mm-hmm. uh, where kind of the first part you you kind of go through that inner healing process yourself and the second part um, you kind of learn how to do this and get equipped for ministry um, and I was talking with Father Jim after uh, maybe it's even after the first one um, and you, you mentioned how nobody leaves your office yeah. without being prayed with and I thought well that seems like such an 
obvious thing, like, I should do that too. <laughs> <laughs> and and, it, and it's amazing how, how much freedom um, can be experienced in five minutes, yep, ten minutes. Absolutely. Because, you, again, the, the Lord has always moved by the presence of faith. And uh, one of the things I love about working with high schoolers is they, I actually think, want to know the truth. Yeah. And so if, if this Jesus guy is who he says he is, and if he is the person that Father's telling me that he is, and he is the person that my theology teachers are saying that he is, it makes sense that he'd be able to speak to me in this five minutes of prayer. And be, because they have that almost that, that hopeful expectation, yep. um, the Holy Spirit can just do some remarkable things, um, uh, especially... Uh, Perhaps some of you remember what it was like being a high schooler. It's <laughs> it's a difficult time of life. Oh, it's just easy. <laughs> like every day, you wake up. I look beautiful. That's right. I'm so excited. To Everyone spend loves me, hours. and I fit in wherever I want. <laughs> right. That, um, that was my experience. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, maybe we had diametrically opposed uh, high school experiences. Though. So, oh, Father Jim. <laughs> so I just believe everyone loves me. And if anyone says anything different, I just cover my ears. <laughs> that didn't hear you. Uh, but it is. It's amazing to see the effect that this type of prayer, and really, ultimately, it's just the Holy Spirit can have when we actually give him room right. to work. And so... I, I did. I began saying, no one's going to leave the office, my office, without getting some sort of prayer. And it's amazing the amount of kids who walk out just saying, like, I feel so much more at peace. I just feel so much better than I did before. And they might not even have words for it. And so what I actually started doing is I have, uh, I call them PAs. They're priest assistants instead of mm, teacher assistants. Nice. And so every hour I have students that are more focused on discipleship. So we'll do some uh, almost like formation at least once a week, and then the rest of the week, they're, they're there to, like, do my bidding. And so they run notes for me and make copies and do all this different stuff, <laughs> get me coffee, wash my car. It's, it's been really nice having them around. And so uh, what I ended up doing, though, is we've kind of trained them to actually participate in the prayer ministry. And so there will be times where I'll have a pretty in-depth conversation with the students, so I'll ask the PA to step out. But then when we're ready to pray, asking them to come back in, and they'll actually pray with us. And I actually love this line in the gospel that as Jesus made the cross, and he came into his own town, and there were people, and there people brought to him a paralytic. And it was actually those people who knew, if I bring this person to Jesus, he can heal them. And that for those students, I can say, hey, you've just got to bring people in here, and then you can actually participate in the saving mission. Right, because and it's their the faith too, right? Exactly. It's not just the faith yeah. of the paralytic that he sees. He sees the faith of, of every heart in the yeah. room, right? And that's the way it spreads throughout the school too. And this is the way that it's supposed to work in our lives is that I see these amazing miracles and I see these things happening. And all of a sudden I just start sharing those testimonies and people are like, oh, maybe I should do that. Or maybe I should go and encounter Jesus in this way. And so for a little bit there too, like all of the sports injuries, I was just getting like this line of kids <laughs> that was coming into my office. And it was so much fun to be able to pray with them and to see God didn't always heal their physical affirmity, but he always did something in their heart. Because just like in that's where he's gospel. moved, right? Exactly. And, the, and, the, and again, that's where he wants to go, right? He wants to go to that, that place of the heart, that level of the heart. Um, to, to bring about that, that conversion of, of mind, that conversion of, of person, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I know there's a question in here. Um, I know that, uh, Father, you mentioned the healing services. We have enjoyed encounter gatherings, and I believe Lansing Catholic was involved in a large aspect of the healing mission. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the, uh, boy, that would have been... Two years ago now. Probably possible to the old. So. <laughs> I, 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 Back in my I've just finished sorry. my fifth year, right? <laughs> Nobody in my, none of my students know that any other crazy. chaplain, right? This will be my first year where I will be the only chaplain known to, yep. to the students. It's, so. That, that, so they don't know anything else, so they have to think that I'm pretty good. So. <laughs> I don't think they have to think that, but they have to think that, something about you. That is true. And you alone, yes. <laughs> so so uh, about two years ago, uh, we invited this uh, group 
called Encounter Ministries into the school. They uh, had filmed a documentary called Fearless, which uh, was trying to look at how do people react to signs and wonders in normal kind of everyday ministry. Um, and so there was a, a, a couple of things where they went to uh, minister, I think, on the campus of Ohio State um, and, and a couple of different places just to see. Father Joe's favorite college. By the <laughs> <laughs> just, and, and so they, they, they were looking at all of these things and they, they wondered what would happen if they filmed a follow-up documentary uh, looking at kind of science, miracles, and wonders specifically in the Catholic school setting. And so they went to three different schools. They uh, had this one particular student experience healing in a school in California. They had a teacher in a school in Ohio uh, kind of doing his own thing. And they wondered what would happen if we put on a full-scale healing service for an entire school. What would, what would that be like? And so about two years ago is when they, they came in, they filmed this documentary, um, and it's called uh, Revive. Uh, and if you want to see it, you can check it out. But um, that moment for our school was, I mean, it's, it's hard to put into words what a remarkable kind of watershed moment that really, that really was. Because... In lack, for lack of better words, the whole thing just went crazy. <laughs> like, like, and that, that was really my first exposure to um, that kind of healing ministry, the, the, that physical healing ministry. And I, re I remember, I, so I've got 500 or so students. I've got about 60-some staff members. We invited very few other people to come in, uh, but uh, a few of the other priests um, from the, the city where uh, we're there and I was just wondering like what what if nothing happens what, what, what like that's that faith that we're talking we, about we, right we've, there. we've 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 spent about two months like yeah. prepping yeah. everybody like we watched fearless as a staff of uh, the campus minister, Ben Pohl, and I, uh, we went into every theology class to answer questions and to give teachings and different things. And so we, we've been planning this this whole thing. It's just like, I, I don't know what's going to happen at this point. And, and I actually think that's a really important <clears throat> point as well, that I think that even the kind of like those, those healing people, that it's not like they step up on stage and they're like, no fear, no worries, like, I'm good. Like, there's always going to be this, at, and actually tomorrow we're celebrating St. Thomas, right? Yeah, yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> such a bad rep, right? Like, why is it doubting, doubting Thomas yeah. and not denying Peter? That's, I, that's all I, I almost say. always talk but, about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll compare notes before that's, our homilies that's, tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> but uh, to be able to say, like, I don't need to have, like, this somehow like perfect faith and if I don't have the right faith like God's not going to work I just need to be able to step out and trust that even if I'm feeling these things I'm still going to choose to pray and I'm still going to choose to move forward even if there's these doubts or these uncertainties in my heart yeah and so uh, the, the the service starts and um as we move into the part where they're actually starting to pray for healing I'm up in the front I'm not leading the thing really i'm just kind of there watching and praying once again the life of a chaplain right? <laughs> it's, it's nice very easy just standing on the sideline <laughs> cup of coffee in hand yes <laughs> but uh so i'm watching and praying as as they they kind of move into this part and right in the front row we've got this kid named cody uh who the, the way i put it like if any single student needed to be touched by God mm -hmm. it was Cody mm -hmm. and so Cody's right there in front but I'm not really focused on Cody I'm just kind of watching everybody and uh, they, they have barely started and I see Cody just like looking around and he's like rubbing his eyes and he <laughs> looks around again and just starts weeping mm -hmm. it's like what is happening? And so he goes up to our campus minister again, again, and Ben, and uh, they start talking, and Cody gets up because uh, they're starting to ask for testimonies of healing. And so I'm standing right there. I'm like, Cody, what's going on? 
It's like, I can see in color. Like, what? It's like, I was born with two kinds of color blindness. And I can see colors. And so that is, that's wild, yep. right? And so he gets up there and like everybody knows Cody, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and again, like if ever there was a kid who needed to be touched by God, yeah. it was that kid. And um, so he delivers this really powerful testimony, and uh, he talks about all the different colors that he can see in the gym now because we've got all the banners from all the other schools and whatever. Um, and so uh, he starts talking about all those different colors, and that testimony yeah. like unlocked everybody else's faith, right? Yep. Because yep. you can hear about the healings that happened 50 miles away three years ago mm -hmm. and and there's there's still some inspiration there right mm -hmm. and, the, and those are good for building up the faith and whatever but or even just reading about them in scripture yeah, right? right well this used to happen 2,000 years ago but this could never happen to me but when it's the kid who sits next yeah. to you yeah. and he was healed like 10 seconds ago and the only thing that happened between <laughs> then and now is prayer like that does something yep. to to people and so as they started praying uh for different other um ailments and conditions i i i lost track at some point we had probably a, over a hundred students yeah. out of 500 give some kind of testimonies to to healing we had uh kids take um their boots off because their broken ankles were working fine nice. uh we had uh, uh, a girl who um she had these like really painful like plantar warts on the bottom of her foot that were instantly like not even there anymore not only did they not hurt but they just like just like just went away yep. Yep. uh we had we had some people other vision things we uh there's uh this if if you ever watch the movie there's this really funny part where there's this girl she's got her glasses up on her head she's just like I used to not be able to see you far away, and I can see pretty far now, man. It's pretty <laughs> weird. <laughs> and uh, we, yeah, um, and so it's that that moment uh, in a in a lot of ways um, kind of set the stage for actually what we're doing now, um, because again, what the Lord really wants to do is He wants to reach hearts and mm. that moment not only for our students but especially for our staff. Who, who stay, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. two years ago, where our senior class graduated, and now the next senior class graduated. And, and so not, there's so much turnover in the student body that not everybody was there. Right. And, and, it's, right. and so it's hard to keep that momentum going sometimes, but having all of our staff yeah. see that and understand like the, the power of that testimony, the power yeah. of... of um, of that that faith um, has dramatically just changed the spiritual landscape of the school mm -hmm. uh, to the point where yeah and people just expect that, you know that we kind of stuff we talk about because our, our family is our school but what would it be like in in your families as you're watching if if something like this were to happen in your family if you sought this out if you had like this authentic faith and just saying like Jesus I really want this how how would that testimony change the atmosphere of your family and I, I think that it, it would like it it really does change things when I start talking about the goodness of God and about the ways that he's healed me and I don't, I don't know if you read the news at all but it turns out there's some negativity out there <laughs> 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 Everybody's laughing. I, I, I haven't why. experienced that. So, I don't know. There's a I don't lot know what of news outlets you were reading, Father Jim. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it turns out that there's some negativity out there, and I can choose to allow that to be the primary influence in my life. And then what will that do to the atmosphere around me? Or I can choose, Jesus, you are so good that you want to be here, that just like in today's gospel, I can bring people to you and you will heal. Not just physically, but even emotionally and mentally. And this is what we talked a little bit about yesterday, was this problem of sin in our lives and that Jesus really does want to bring healing there. And so it's been amazing to see, like, you could do that at big corporate things like a, a prayer, um, a healing service. service, or and a lot of what we do too is like one-on-one -on -one prayers. And uh, just, just a real quick story, because I think that often we can say too, 
like, oh, well, God has bigger things to worry about than, like, my little problems. Yep. And both of us, stop it. Stop. <laughs> don't, don't say that. Because God cares about everything, right? Because he says, even the hairs on your head are counted. Yeah. And I feel like I should just point out that God has a very easy time counting my hairs. So he has more time to love me and put us pour out gifts on me. So I'm sure it works that way about you. Oh, trust me. It does. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> And uh, so I actually had a, a student who had just gotten her ear pierced. And so something she had taken on herself, this was by no means obligatory. <laughs> accidental. Yeah, or accidental. <laughs> and uh, whoever had done it, maybe it wasn't a great job, but it was all swollen and red. And she was like, oh, Father Jim, it really hurts. Can we pray? I was like, absolutely. And so we prayed. And you could actually see the swelling go down. And she was like, oh, my gosh, this feels so much better. And literally, nothing changed besides the fact that we prayed, but Jesus cared about that. Right. That this wasn't too small, and Jesus wasn't saying like, oh, well, this was kind of your fault, and why did you do this in the first place? That he really cared about even that small amount of suffering and wanted to bring his yeah. healing presence like, there. Well, last year, we had this girl. Um, so we, we showed the whole documentary to our students because, again, half of them weren't there. Yep. And they've been hearing about all of these different things and um, experiencing some of that one-on-one -on -one stuff. And so we, we had kind of a, a mini healing service at the end of uh, the day, um, one day last fall. And... Uh, the next day, one of our freshman girls came into her theology class with a broken finger, and she said, Mrs. Gates, why wasn't my finger healed? And Mrs. Gates said, I don't know, but I bet we can pray again and ask Jesus to do something for you. Mm -hmm. And her whole class was just like, let's do it! <laughs> right? So they like swarmed this girl, and, and, and so again, I'm not there. Mm -hmm. Ben isn't there. And Mrs. Gates is not really leading. It's just these this group of freshmen <laughs> swarm of swarming freshmen. her. Or is and it a the, gaggle? A, a, gag, a, a freshman may be a gaggle. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, so there's just this crowd of freshmen just around this girl. Um, and and they, they're the ones. So it's just like, Jesus, we're just asking to heal her finger. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, uh, she ended up taking the splint off. She, no pain, complete pain range of motion she tried out for the basketball team that evening oh, nuts. uh which uh, yeah it's just incredible just amazing right and and we could keep telling stories we you do have questions that oh yes. are being transmitted <laughs> straight to our brains but to talk to us as well that the inner healing is is what i found has been even even more profound in a lot of situations where students will come in with just some pretty deep psychological or emotional brokenness or pain and walking out just with this great freedom. And almost always, yeah, it's not like, oh boy, I need just the right technique or I need to say just the right things. It's just allowing Jesus to show up. Right, yeah. right. Well, and, and that's what I tell people and, and why I love that, um, that philosophy that nobody's going to leave my office without prayer um, because Jesus actually knows exactly what this person needs and it's like the it's like the easiest Crazy. it's the easiest job in the world it's like yeah. jesus do something yeah. and then something happens like, jesus yeah. keep doing that mm -hmm. all right and it's god been, bless uh, you we'll see you tomorrow this like, has actually happened a few times uh is a, a student will come in with a specific prayer request and as we start praying jesus is like leading us in a very different direction and then they experience some healing there and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, yeah, this other thing is gone, too. That, that was easy. <laughs> right? And it, it's amazing to see the way that Jesus does. He knows our hearts and is just looking for that invitation to be allowed in uh, in order to bring us that healing we were made for. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty remarkable. As, again, as you give the Holy Spirit room to work and to speak, he takes it. Yeah. Right? He, yeah. he takes the advantage of the space that he's given. Um, yep. And uh, again, even in the span of just that five or ten minutes of prayer, um, can do a remarkable yep. amount of, of healing and a remarkable amount of work um, in that small that small little bit. Yeah. And sometimes there, and I think with all of this actually, there can be moments of profound grace and profound healing, but ultimately that needs to be continued. And 
It is. It's a call to walk with Jesus that when Jesus called his disciples, he didn't say, go and do this. He actually said, come and follow me. And so with all of these uh, healing stories, the goal is actually an encounter with Jesus in such a way that I choose to become his disciple and right. walk daily with him. Right. And I think we could both think of stories where uh, somebody has this profound encounter and just begins to walk with the Lord day by day. And other situations where somebody has this profound encounter and is like, peace, and just <laughs> right. kind of goes back to doing their same old thing. Yep. And God's love still meets them there. He doesn't like take that back, but there needs to be some sort of kind of follow-up. Which there. actually I think is one of the hu- hugest blessings of being at the school, right? Uh-huh. Because at parish ministry, uh, I'm, I get to see whoever really wants to be there. Yeah. At the school, there are sometimes people there who don't want to be there. <laughs> this may surprise Perhaps you. that's surprising <laughs> to you who have high schoolers, and they're just dying to go back to class. Is, right? You can usually tell how the day is going to be as kids are walking in the front door. I think there are kids that literally are like crawling in, like, I can't do it. <laughs> yep. But uh, uh, it, it, it's interesting because basically 100% of my yeah. mission field yeah. is there every day, yeah. right? And so the the idea of those little chance encounters is just skyrockets yeah. Uh, yeah. because I see a kid walking in the hallway with crutches yeah. or or whatever, right? <laughs> That's there's an opportunity there to just just invite the Lord in, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, because that that follow up is just built into mm-hmm. who we are as chaplains, right? Uh, every kid who was at the healing service that first time was there for the next three months, yep. and uh, every staff member still for the last two three years, uh, yep. we've been able to uh, to kind of continue some of that. And, uh, and so yeah, that's that's a huge blessing as to the, what the school is actually able to provide as far as that yeah. environment goes. Well, and to talk about that process too, there's a, there's a question that came up and I think this relates back to yesterday. We were talking a little bit about addiction and how so often uh, sin is something that becomes habitual. And we talked about the brain chemistry behind that. And so if you haven't watched it, I, Carrie, do we know how many views that got? Because we're over 6,000. Okay, we're halfway home people. So if you each just watch it about a thousand more times, <laughs> Well, we'll pass Father Joe. He's watching a thousand times. Listen, Father Joe, I have high expectations for my, my listeners, watchers. Is there Father Joe's <laughs> listeners and watchers? No, 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 no. So I will, we'll, we'll convert them. It's all good. We'll convert but, them. But, yeah, the, we'll but, convert them. Is that what you just said? Exactly. But I, I won't get into all the ways that Father Joe needs deeper conversion. Oh, but. So we had talked about this, and one of the questions that came up today was, um, so it says, I'm a recovered alcoholic with 12 years of sobriety. So congratulations. Like, that is amazing, and that's awesome. And I I would even correct this to say I am a recovering alcoholic because all of us are recovering in the sin, right? And it's only one moment that allows me to go back to that or one step that I choose that again. But every moment I'm recovering because I'm abiding with Jesus and he's leading me in the right direction. And so the, the point that he's or she is making here is addiction is a sin. Alcoholism doesn't go away because it's considered a mental illness. So I attend AA Mass and pray. Perfect. My question is, am I still in sin? And so alcoholism, that addiction, is not a sin. It's a habit of sin, right? Right. And so the sin itself would be uh, becoming drunk. Right. And if I do that habitually, that is alcoholism. But the sin itself is the action, that the addiction right, the, isn't a the, sin. The condition itself is morally neutral, right? Right. Well, and because it's, it's a habit of right. sin. But I can also have li- like an addiction to something good, right? Yeah. And we, addiction has a negative connotation, so we usually wouldn't use that terminology. But like, this is actually kind of funny. I kind of have an addiction to praying in the morning. There are mornings where I'll like wake up a little bit later and maybe I didn't get my full time of prayer and I just feel like off all day. And it's because, again, that brain chemistry has become so hardwired to like have this time of solitude and have this time of quiet with the Lord in the morning Mm -hmm. that without that, everything's just a little bit off. And that's in a positive way because it's pushing me in the direction of 
I need to make sure I make time for this. Right. And so again, that habit, that addiction is a good thing. So for somebody who struggles with alcoholism or another addiction, the addiction itself is not the it's sin. It's not the sin, right. It's the thing that you repeatedly are doing. And that's where the hope of freedom comes. Right. And again, with some of this inner healing prayer, and, and we could even talk about confession too, that confession is amazing, an amazing opportunity oh, yeah. just to receive God's mercy. And that what Jesus wants to do isn't just wash us clean and then set us right back where we were, but repentance is actually turning away right. and turning in the right direction, right? Right, which is why I love that uh, story from Scripture of the, the healing of the blind man, right, Bartimaeus. Right? When Jesus heals him, he says, go your way, your faith has saved you. And immediately Bartimaeus follows Jesus, yep. right? Yep. The way of Bartimaeus is suddenly <laughs> wherever Jesus is going, right? Yep. <laughs> because I, I experienced this encounter with, with the person. I experienced the healing that he has for me, not only in my eyes, but in my heart. And suddenly, I just want to be wherever he is. Right? Yep. And so his way becomes my way. Absolutely. And that's the amazing thing about all of these stories that we're sharing is that it's not supposed to be this one time and then I'm like, okay, put that in a box and just set that aside. But it's just evidence of what's always present is this life-changing grace. Right. And I can walk with the Holy Spirit abiding in my heart. I can walk with Jesus as a son or daughter of the Father every single moment of my life. Amen. Yeah. And this has been the amazing thing about some of, and I was, this is helpful because I was actually just praying about this this morning. Uh, some of this inner healing prayer, for me, the Lord speaks to me a lot through kind of like these images mm -hmm. or even like memories that he enters into mm -hmm. and kind of like purifies. And so uh, there is, I'm just going to tell a story. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, one of the, <laughs> I hope you're all listening as attentively as Father Paul. Uh, one of the, the wounds in my heart was I always felt like I'm the only one working and that no one's really there to help me in this mission. And so I'd get really burned out because I felt like I was invested mm. and everyone around me was doing nothing, which wasn't true. And I knew that, but that was the way that I felt about it. And so I acted in that way and it, it came out sideways with lots of passive aggressive and sure. angry remarks, things like that. And so as I was praying, I was brought back to this memory of me as uh, I was probably in middle school. And the only cooking I ever grew up doing was grilling. And I was actually pretty good at that. Everything else, I once made tomato soup and it turns out it's condensed which is crazy, right? <laughs> Who does that? So I made tomato soup, and as I was eating it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing ever. So uh, if I cook something for you, probably give it away. Unless it's grilled. Yeah. Unless it's grilled, then you, you can probably eat it, because it's probably fantastic. Probably. But regardless, so I was cooking, but we had a family over, some of my good friends, and we were playing basketball while I was cooking. The desire of my heart was to play basketball. But I knew that my duty was to cook the chicken, to grill the chicken. And so what ended up happening was I became slightly overly focused on <laughs> basketball. And when I went back to the grill, there were like these little dark <laughs> pieces of what used to be meat <laughs> that were now just like now ash. burned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You like poke them and they just dissolve. Aww. And so it was, it was rough. And so I uh, got, got kind of chewed out and it was, it was not a great night. And so it felt terrible because I was like, why couldn't somebody else have been helping me? I was trying to do all these different things. And as I brought that to Jesus, he entered into that memory. And the, the message that he gave to me was, Jim, you do the thing that you long for. Go fulfill that desire of your heart. I've got the chicken. And it's been this amazing, almost like mantra of when I'm feeling overwhelmed, when I feel like I'm the only one working, I can almost hear Jesus just say, I've got the chicken. Amen. And it's just this great consolation. And I know it's, it's like crazy because if I say that to somebody else, it's like, hey, don't Carrie, worry. don't worry. Jesus got the chicken. Jesus got the chicken. <laughs> like, it's unique to me because Jesus met me exactly where I needed him to meet me and has given me this amazing message that's given me so much hope and peace that in those moments where I feel overwhelmed or overburdened or overworked, he just says to me, I've got the chicken. And I can fulfill that desire in my heart to just be me and to do what I was made for, knowing that he's taking care of the rest. Amen. And so it's amazing the way that this can stick with you as you continue to go. Right. Well, and, and that's what, I mean, there are 
a lot of amazing things about Jesus. Maybe you knew that. <laughs> but one of my favorites is that uh, he's outside of time, right? Yeah. And so that moment of burning the chicken is present, right? That's, mm-hmm. a, that's a reality yeah. Yeah. for him yeah. that's, that's still there, right? So when we talk about inner healing, we're not talking about like just some psychological trick where I'm just like tricking myself into thinking mm-hmm. that I'm better than I am so I can move on with my day, yep. right? What we're actually doing is we're inviting Jesus to access that present reality, which is, which is still present to him. It's a living thing right. to him. And so he can enter into that moment, even though it's in my memory, mm-hmm. he, and show me the truth of things. Because that's what wounds are, right? Wounds are half-truths or just straight-out lies that this traumatic thing that happened uh, results in this, um, either, yeah, this lie, this belief, this vow, whatever kind of form that takes, that then carries all of that pain from that trauma through the rest of my life, right? Yeah. So so in the past, right, the chicken wasn't actually remade, right? The, the, the past <laughs> event... It was not. Right? <laughs> no. the, the, the past event didn't actually change, Correct. but what changes is the pain, yep. right? What changes is the lie. What changes is that wound. Right, And so I can invite Jesus into that living reality of the wound that is there, and that's what he wants to address. It's not, in a certain sense, it's not about the chicken, right? It's about the pain, right? Mm-hmm. And, and this lie that I'm dealing with, that that's what Jesus wants to, to bring forth and, and, and to bring victory to, right? Yeah. Um, and it's amazing the way that the Lord enters into these moments, and again, in a very unique way for you, rather than saying like, oh, generically, Here's how I'm going to work. And I I do love that about the Gospels as well. I don't think there's any time that Jesus heals the same, two different people in the exact same way. Right. right? And I'm just grateful I didn't get spit in my eyes or anything like that. (laughs) I like the way it worked for me. (laughs) And I I like as well where uh, it's the the woman who comes in and washes Jesus' hair. Mm. Feet? Washes Jesus' feet (laughs) with her hair. Yes, that's the way. uh, yeah, I, I usually tell people in confession, maybe it's been a long time since you've been con- to confession, but you don't have to do this for me. It's okay. Like, I, I did wash my feet this morning. And so uh, it, it is amazing, though, that Jesus meets us exactly where we're at right. in order to heal our hearts. Right. Yeah. And, he, and again, uh, it's, it's funny. People, just talking about confession again for just a second, people think that confessions are like, super exciting and and they are but not for the reason most people think right the actual confession part of confession is like the boring part with because every sin is just about the same right there's like mm-hmm. 10 of them it's... and everybody does some of them some of the time to some degree right and there's they're stupid they're generic and it just sucks but the grace yep. that's yep. that's available there that's made present is always Tailor made, right? It's mm-hmm. always so specific to that that person, to that heart that Jesus is encountering, and that is something I'll never tire of. Yeah. Right? I'll never yeah. tire of watching Jesus transform human hearts. Um, it's it's just it's wonderful. It is. And between us, we only have thirteen years of priesthood. Right? I just did seven. It's just over seven, yeah. And. Uh, I bet you we've heard just about everything in the confessional. Yep. And it, it After does, like the first couple of weeks. Yep, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so, like people will come and be like, Father, I'm sure you've never heard this before. Try like, it. Yeah, exactly. What you got? <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> and that's the amazing thing is it's never too much for Jesus. It's never beyond his ability to bestow his mercy. Yep. And there's no amount of times that he can't forgive it. And so yep. that encouragement as well to keep bringing it to him over and over and over and over again. Yep. And, you know, we've talked a lot about confession and kind of some of this prayer ministry. There was a question, though, about uh, anointing of the sick. And so it says the church teaches that if a dying person receives all the sacraments and the anointing of the sick, a person is saved. So why do we not believe that person does not go directly to heaven and not to purgatory? And so do you want to... No, go ahead. So uh, the sacraments are the sacraments, and so they always bestow grace. But if I have a present here, you can't really have this, but that's besides the point. So... (laughs) If I have this gift for Father Paul, that depends on I how can, strong you are. <laughs> I can offer it to him, but an offered gift, he could refuse, right? And so I could continue to offer 
and even get closer and closer and closer, but he needs to be willing to receive that gift. What Jesus is willing to do, especially in the sacraments, is always to offer grace. And so when that gift is fr freely given, which it always is, and received, that grace can become efficacious. But for somebody who's resisting that grace, there's going, or even if maybe there is subconsciously, like I've put up walls, whether it's because uh, I've been hurt before, whether it's because I don't really believe this, there can be walls that block some of that grace, not because God's grace is different, but because I'm not willing to receive it. And so with the anointing of the sick and the other sacraments, where is this person's heart and the ability to receive? Right. And, and even with that, um, the difference between going to purgatory and going directly to heaven, um, let, let's, let's say somebody made a, a good confession and then, God forbid, just gets hit by a bus, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, they still might not go directly to heaven because purgatory... Purgatory is not about necessarily the sin. Purgatory is about the attachment that I have yeah, to the sin, perfect. right? <laughs> and so uh, depending on my level of freedom that I'm experiencing, um, my heart actually still might be moved towards that sin, even though I've been forgiven completely. Mm -hmm. um, that, that attachment might still be there. And so uh, what purgatory is, is a, it's a purifying of my heart from all those other attachments and, and those yes. disordered desires, right? Because at the, at the heart of all those desires is something good and something holy, exactly. and we just got to get those things rightly ordered in order to enter into the perfection of heaven. Yep. And so if you want to hear more about those holy desires, just tune into our uh, podcast from yesterday. So that we can beat Father Joe, get enough views, <laughs> it'll be perfect. So I'm starting to think you're just using me to get views from <laughs> yesterday. Can you share this, by the way? What's wrong with you? Uh, so we've got a couple more minutes, and so we'll do a few more questions real quick. And I, we, we're, we'll go here for right now. This question is, how would you answer your students if they ask, why hasn't the Lord healed this COVID pandemic? Mm. And so we had talked about this a little bit before the podcast, and we weren't actually going to necessarily go here because it can be kind of a longer topic of conversation but yeah what what about those situations where I ask for something and I don't get it and I think that this is a big issue for lots of people not just with physical healing but I ask for the grace of conversion for someone else or I ask for an A on my test or I ask to make the basketball team and I don't get what I want how do we respond to that so the the way that I re so I've led uh half dozen healing services and the way that I try to explain it um, before we actually start praying for healing <clears throat> is and again why I kind of like where we started with uh, with the paralytic and that that movement toward the heart um, because there are times I think where perhaps the the working that the work that the Lord wants to do in the heart perhaps can't happen mm -hmm. any other mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. right um, and uh, and so there there are times when I think it's that but it, but again uh, where the Lord wants to meet us is here and so when I don't receive the thing that I'm looking for I don't receive the thing that I'm specifically asking for it doesn't mean that um, I just must not have enough faith it must it doesn't mean that God doesn't love me it doesn't mean that my prayers are like somehow worse or broken right it doesn't it doesn't actually mean any of that things what it means is that the grace that the lord has prepared for you is a little bit more surprising mm -hmm. than perhaps we were thinking originally and uh and so when i when i go to the lord with this particular thing and i don't see the fruit at least right away um Sometimes and like, sometimes the Lord wants to give us perseverance, right? The, the, exactly. That the girl with the broken yeah. finger. Yeah. Why wasn't I healed yesterday? I don't know. Let's pray again. Yep. Oh, now I'm healed. Like yep. uh, the the Lord has uh, wants to teach us lots of different lessons. Uh, again, not so that I have like a perfect body for forever, but so I have a, a pure heart forever. Yeah. Um, and I love that. That's the way that this gospel works as well. Is right. these people bring the paralytic on a stretcher and are saying, Jesus, heal them. And Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. And they could say like, you messed what it up. What the heck? That wasn't what we wanted. Yeah. Why didn't you do what we wanted? But Jesus didn't give them exactly what they wanted, but he did give them exactly what they needed. Precisely. Right? And so to be able to recognize that whenever I pray, God is going to give me what I need. 
And again, he doesn't work in like this, uh, I, I guess this mentality of, I need to give them exactly what they want right now. But he also doesn't like hook the donut up to the stick and dangle <laughs> it in front of us and say like, if you stick it out, I'm going to give you what you want. It's much more of this entering in. And so if our goal is to get to this end point of inner healing, of uh, deeper relationship with Jesus, of even physical healing, he may say, let's enter in and we're going to walk there together. Right. And that's the amazing thing is that in situations like what's going on with COVID, I actually think there's an incredible purification happening. And we, we could do a whole podcast on oh, this yeah. too. But to talk about what's what's been lost, athletics and sports that... Uh, we're being purified of this idol of kind of like some security of financial like ease that's gone. Who am I going to rely on that? A lot of like my time, my wants, my desires that I do think there's this purification happening of some of these things in our hearts that have really become idols. And we've gotten back to, am I willing to enter into prayer? Am I willing to spend time with the domestic church, your families, right. and to be able to actually encounter Jesus there as well? And one of my biggest hopes, um, especially for the high schoolers, is that this time has proven to them that my screen cannot actually be yeah. my community, yep. right? Yep. Uh, because... Uh, I, I'm sure Powers is much the same way, but Lansing Catholic, we moved all of our classes online. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're on Zoom calls or oh FaceTime or Skype or, or whatever, right? You're, you're staring at your screen for like however many hours. Yeah. And, and at the end, you just feel like drained. Yeah. And it's because I actually haven't been spending time with people, yeah. right? I've been interfacing with a camera, with a screen, speaker and a screen and that is just not the same yeah and so um i my hope is that our first day back in school basically the classes can't happen because everybody's <laughs> just chatting like yep. i that, that's so, that's what i actually hope for and if you're one of my teachers i'm really sorry that i just said that <laughs> <laughs> but but i really hope that uh our students miss each other Mm -hmm. I hope that they've missed you, and I really hope that we all just get to be together yeah. as a community yeah. of actual people talking about human things in a human way, yeah. because we've been without that for so long that um, uh, before all this, it was really easy to use my screen as an escape because I've got all these other kind of systems in place, mm -hmm. but when all that stuff is stripped away and this is all I've got... I start to realize this can't yeah. ever be enough. This and can't ever be as fulfilling as I want it to be. What's really struck me throughout this time is that Jesus doesn't want a virtual relationship with us. Mm -hmm. He wants a real relationship with us. And that, the exact same thing happened for me was I, I was making it a point to call people and to Zoom with people and to text people. And I realized, like, this just isn't the same but how often do we do that with the Lord as well as we say, well, I watched Mass on TV today and I tuned into Quarantine Catechesis with Father Jim and Father Paul. But did I really spend the personal one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus? And did I really deepen that relationship with him today? And so God doesn't want a virtual relationship with you. He wants a real relationship with you. And that's going to take some work on our part too. Well, and, and I think that goes back to do I know a lot about somebody or do I actually mm -hmm. know somebody, mm -hmm. right? Because I can know a lot about, um, I mean, just pick the person, right? My favorite author, G.K. Chesterton. I know a lot about the guy. I've read a couple of biographies and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't actually know him. Like, uh, and I think we have the tendency or at least the temptation to treat Jesus that way, right? I can know a lot about the guy with ever, without ever actually meeting him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, that second part is what Jesus wants. Right? Yep. He wants to go from just knowing about me to knowing me. Yep. And the same and vice versa, that he doesn't want us just to treat him as like a sacramental Pez dispenser, where I'm like, push the button and I get my, the healing I want. But he actually wants to be in relationship with us. Right. right? Which and, is sometimes why things are withheld for yeah. different moments and, or, or, or granted right there on the, mo on the spot. Uh, it, yeah. It, he, he works it out as best as it should be. Well, and exactly as it should be, right. right? Absolutely. And so that is all the time that we have for today, unless... Oh, and so it sounds like there were a few questions we didn't get to, 
So we will answer those tomorrow. And I, I was looking at some of them. I think some of them are Catholic school questions too, oh. which I'll be on location at Powers Catholic, yeah. the best high school in the Diocese of Lansing. Yeah, and so uh, I'll answer some of those Catholic school questions as well. And it sounds like you guys actually liked Father Paul. <gasps> Yes. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and so maybe at some point we'll try to get him back again. That yeah. sounded really condescending. <laughs> it was actually light this It guy. was meant in the best possible light. So, and let's be honest, in comparison with Father Joe and I. Right. Like, wow. Oh, but man. Father Paul is an amazing priest, a great friend of mine, too. And it has been great being chaplains together. It really has been. We've kind of know quite I'll a bit about just, each other. Just refer to as Father Eric. Oh, <laughs> well, you have a new lot. name now. I so. get that a lot, there, actually. That's not... <laughs> so tomorrow we'll be on location at Powers Catholic. Father Paul, since it's his summer, he doesn't do anything as a chaplain anyway, so maybe he'll just come back and help us out. But uh, we'll be on location. It'll be awesome. We'll answer some of these questions. If you found this helpful today, please share it with other people. And maybe this will be the one that gets over 11,000 views. And then, well, actually, do we have to get 22? Because there's two oh, of us. I don't know. I don't know. No, we'll, we'll call it 11. We'll cross that bridge when yeah. we come to We it. are one body in Christ, right? Amen. So it's perfect. And uh, we never want to leave you without a prayer and a blessing. And so we pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of your gifts and blessings, for all the amazing ways that you want to bring healing to our minds, our bodies, and our souls. And all the ways, Lord, that you accompany us and walk with us as those healings take place. And so we ask, Lord, for a deeper faith and trust in you. And we ask especially today for the grace of a deeper discipleship so that we can walk day by day, moment by moment with you to receive all the good things you have planned for us. We ask that you would bless us, our families, and all those whom we love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Quarantine Catechesis. And hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. God bless.